In the realm of military influence in popular culture, there exists a wide range of tactics beyond the familiar images of propaganda, posters, and commercials. The few, the proud, the Marines. Instead, the Department of Defense has a long-standing partnership with the entertainment industry, collaborating on numerous films and TV shows. However, the question arises, is this collaboration merely an attempt to present an accurate depiction of military operations, or is there a hidden agenda to shape public perception in favor of the armed forces? Today, we investigate the involvement of the US Department of Defense and the CIA in advising on movies and TV shows, examining their controversies surrounding their influence on storytelling and the potential manipulation of public opinion. First, we'll explore the extent to which the Pentagon censors content and we'll talk about the dangers of omitting certain aspects of military operations. Then we'll delve into how a blockbuster movie like Top Gun revolutionized both military and civilian culture. From the early days of silent films to the present, the military's collaboration with the entertainment industry has garnered massive profits at the box office. These films often portray the military in a positive light, but it begs the question, is this a result of the filmmaker's creative choices, or is the Pentagon exerting its influence to shape narratives and create war propaganda? The collaboration between the military and the entertainment industry dates back nearly a century, with one of the earliest examples being in 1927 with the film Wings. Producers sought to make the World War I scenes as realistic as possible, and they approached the Department of Defense for assistance. However, in exchange for access to advanced fighter planes, the military had creative control over the script, allowing them to make any changes they deemed necessary. This arrangement set the stage for a more formal partnership between Hollywood and the military's Office of War Information, otherwise known as OWI. Filmmakers gained access to expensive equipment and military bases, all while the military had the power to shape the narratives in their favor. This collaboration reached the peak during World War II when then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt recognized the power of movies to influence public opinion. The OWI reviewed thousands of film scripts during the war, vetting them for anything that could portray the armed forces in a negative light. If a script didn't meet their criteria, the OWI refused to support the project, making it difficult for filmmakers to secure funding and resources. This level of control over the narrative allowed the military to present a sanitized version of war, omitting battlefield losses, war crimes, and other aspects that could tarnish their image. But the military's influence doesn't stop at war movies. They've extended their reach to various genres, including comedies, romance, and even sci-fi adventures. Films like Meet the Parents and Jurassic Park 3 have both undergone script changes and alterations at the behest of the Pentagon, ensuring that the military is portrayed favorably even in non-military contexts. The Defense Department's involvement also extends to TV shows, game shows, reality TV, and even music videos, where they've helped shape storylines, depict military-themed episodes, and even recruit directly from the audience. While the military claims to provide a realistic portrayal of military and intelligence operations, their focus on presenting a positive image raises concerns. By selectively omitting or altering facts, they create a one-sided narrative that downplays the true cost and consequences of war. For instance, issues like sexual assault and misconduct within the military are often left out of films and TV shows, presenting a skewed version of reality. This selective storytelling can shape public opinion, justify war efforts, and disregard the very real human toll that comes with it. The influence of the Department of Defense on Hollywood goes far beyond shaping narratives. It also serves as a recruitment tool, targeting young audiences who are inspired by the heroic and glamorous portrayal of the armed forces. Films like Top Gun not only entertained, but they fueled a huge surge in Navy pilot applications. 
The military capitalized on the film's popularity, setting up recruitment booths outside theaters, and capitalizing on the newfound interest in military careers. The partnership between the military and the entertainment industry is not without its controversies. The tailhook scandal, which involved sexual assaults at a Navy and Marine Corps conference, revealed a dark side to the Top Gun mentality. The glorification of naval pilots in films like Top Gun may have contributed to a culture that downplayed the seriousness of sexual misconduct within the military. The influence of the US Department of Defense and CIA in Hollywood is not a new phenomenon. In the late 2000s, the CIA even had a section of its website called Now Playing, where it offered filmmakers pre-approved storylines based on declassified intelligence operations. These storylines had already received the stamp of approval from the Department of Defense, effectively presenting a curated version of history to the entertainment industry. One notable example of this collaboration is the film Argo, released in 2012. The movie was based on a true story of a CIA operation to rescue American hostages in Iran. Before shooting, the director and star of the film, Ben Affleck, collaborated closely with the CIA, attending meetings at their headquarters to ensure the film's accuracy. However, critics argue that Argo portrayed a distorted version of events focusing primarily on the successful rescue of a few individuals while downplaying the failures and controversies surrounding the operation. This case highlights the potential for the military and intelligence agencies to manipulate narratives to their own advantage, using the entertainment industry as a vehicle for their own public relations and recruitment purposes. Once again, even seemingly unrelated genres have received input and script changes from the military. This wide-reaching influence raises questions about the extent of their control over the entertainment industry and the potential impact on the public's perception. It's important to acknowledge that not all films and TV shows comply with the military's request to seek their collaboration. Some creators choose to pursue their artistic vision without military support, as was the case with films like Apocalypse Now and Platoon. However, the financial and logistical benefits of military cooperation can be substantial, leading many filmmakers to engage in the partnership. In light of these factors, it becomes crucial for audiences to be critical consumers of media, recognizing the potential biases and omissions within military influence content allows for a more nuanced understanding of the stories being told. By seeking out multiple perspectives and engaging in informed discussions, we can develop a more comprehensive view of historical events and the complex realities of military operations. The collaboration between the US Department of Defense, the CIA, and Hollywood is a multifaceted relationship that raises important concerns about censorship, propaganda, and the manipulation of public opinion. While it provides filmmakers with the access to resources and expertise, it also comes with the risk of presenting a skewed version of history and downplaying the true costs of war. As consumers of media, it is essential to approach these portrayals critically and seek a deeper understanding of the complexities behind these glamorized narratives. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much.